This is not a flex. This is a test of the often debated theory that gear does not matter to a professional photographer. If this had been a flex, after this video, it would be accompanied by na 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 and all that kind of stuff, but I am kind to other professionals, and so this is not a flex. You are going to see some very expensive things, some very expensive stuff in this video, but keep in mind, this is not a flex. Okay, now that we got that out of the way, this is a red sitting camera. This is a Mercedes-Benz Sprinter van. And why am I showing you a red cine camera and a Mercedes-Benz Sprinter van? It's because of this debate that you don't need expensive gear to be a professional photographer. And I disagree with that on a couple different levels. And so I have these two things right here, which are probably the two most expensive things that I own as far as uh, the business is concerned to make a point, okay? And that point is that, yes, you can do quality work with lesser gear, but on some level, you need stuff like this if, if you are to obtain that level. And by that, I mean this. Take a van, for instance, okay? And I don't know if you can see this. It's probably gonna focus on me. I'll get out of the frame here, but, this has my branding on the side of it. That's pretty important. Um, you, you know, it's pretty important because it legitimizes my business. It makes me different than the uncle that you know with the DSLR camera, okay? It shows clients that, hey, you, you know, if, if I didn't know what I was doing, then how would my business be able to afford things like this? Okay, that, that, that's important. However, okay, and the utility of it too, okay. Um, before I had this van, I was working out of an SUV. I had cases on top of cases, bought the van. This is a 2020 Mercedes-Benz Sprinter turbo diesel four-wheel drive. It's, it's all the fun stuff because, hey, they're expensive anyway, so you might as well get the one you want, right? So before I bought this van, I was working out of an SUV, cases on top of cases. It is so much better to have a van where everything can be inside it, where it's supposed to go, all buttoned up. I don't have to build things anymore, right? So when you have cases on top of cases in an SUV, what you end up doing is put, having to put stuff together and take stuff apart because it only fits in the case one way, okay? With a vehicle like that, it fits in it any way you want it to, you know? And so this isn't gonna be a tour of the van. I'm actually gonna do that um, if there's interest on it because I have quite a bit of upfitting uh, for this van to make it uh, fit my needs. So that matters. The utility portion of it matters. It probably doesn't matter as much as the perception of it, okay? And the same thing with this red camera, okay? This red camera looks incredible. The, the body of it looks incredible. The image from it looks incredible. Can you get this kind of image off of a camera like that? Yeah, you can. But this camera is going to have a presence about it. Not just on set, but your footage will have a presence about it too. So as great as this is with utility, it's actually not the most important reason to have a vehicle like this or a camera like that. And you would think, okay, well, the only other reason to do that would be to impress people, to impress your client. You would be kind of right. It is to impress somebody, but it's not to impress your client. Curious? All right, let's get in the van, take a ride, and we'll discuss it further.
Okay, so what do I mean by professionals need to have professional gear for the quality of their work? And why is it that our clients are uh, not the most important part of that? So that's two very different discussions, and so let's go ahead and break them down and take them one by one. So the gear thing, uh, as far as it being important for your work, it just is. And there are lots of very talented photographers out there, both professional and not, who can squeeze that turnip, uh, you know, and, and have a, a crop body sensor camera and, and a bunch of not very nice or expensive glass, and because of their skills, be turning out excellent work. Now, I'm not trying to minimize that. I respect the heck out of that, uh, you know, and, and I, I definitely think that uh, those who don't know where photography is going to take them should probably not spend a lot on gear to begin with. However, I think those who know that they want to be professionals in this or just want the absolute best image quality that they can get because there's nothing wrong with that either i would encourage them to stretch their budgets and uh, by any means necessary uh, you know figure out a way within your budget to get professional bodies professional lenses because you know it's that old adage buy cheap buy twice you know whereas if you buy a professional level, very robust camera body, not only would it last you for much longer, and this is doubly true for lenses, by the way, uh, not only would they last you for much longer than the cheaper stuff, but it's just gonna make better images uh, in the meantime. And you are not going to be, it actually allows you to develop uh, because you're not gonna be restricted by the gear. So pretty early on when I decided to be a professional photographer, that's what I did. I, I went out and bought the best that I could get my hands on because even though I wasn't at the time yet able to use all the features effectively or know as many techniques and such as I do now, I did not want that to be a crutch. And so if my photography was not as good as somebody else in my market whose photography I liked, I'm not, I can't say, well, you know, if only I had this. Well, I, I went and I got that, you know, so that, that's not going to be a crutch for me. So that, that's, you know, there are different ways of looking at this, and, and that's mine, you know, and I'm, I'm never going to scoff at anybody for, for having less uh, than I do. But at the same time, you know, if, if you want to be at the pro level and, and play on that, uh, you know, that game, then... You're going to need to have gear that is consistent with the expectations. So that brings us into our next point. So what did I mean when I said, well, you know, all of this stuff, the van, the cinema camera, the, you know, it's not your client that you're trying to impress. Okay, so this is what I mean by that. Commercial photography, which real estate photography is commercial photography, is different than portraiture photography in that most of the time who you are trying to impress is not your client but your client's client right so you have the sellers of these homes they put their home up for sale they interview a few different agents i don't think many of them really do that they just kind of know somebody goes to their church or whatnot uh, but let's say they interview a few different agents your client comes in and says you should go with me because all these reasons and one of them is these beautiful pictures that my photographer provides he's the best photographer around and you know look what he's done for me and, and so on and so forth okay your clients reputation now is completely connected to the quality of photography that you are going to deliver so it's very, very important that you impress not your client, the real estate agent, but your client's client, the home seller. Whereas, in con by contrast, if you are a portraiture photographer and you're shooting weddings, uh, which is what a lot of portraiture photographers want to do, um, your client is going to be 
the people in the photos. You know, it's going to be the bride or it's going to be the family of the bride or, or whoever, you know. But, you know, so you only have those people to impress that you already have a relationship with. And the other important thing to keep in mind is that those are typically one-time clients, uh, you know, or once a year or whatever, you know, as, as their family grows or they want to do their, you know, pumpkin patch photos or whatever, you know, you don't get a lot of business out of each individual client when you're doing portraiture typically, all right? Whereas with commercial photography, with real estate, with, with branding, you know, doing, um, you know, corporate commercials and things like that, these are clients that are worth a lot of money to you. And, you know, I have real estate agents that I shoot several properties per month for, you know, some of those higher producing agents. And I, I have a builder uh, that uh, is building all over the place. And, and I'm typically doing several new builds, luxury new builds per month for that builder. You know, so it's, it's pretty important to keep your clients happy and to keep their clients happy. So let me just, you know, let me just touch a little bit further on the difference between video cameras. Um, I, the difference between video cameras, in, in my opinion, is much greater than the difference between stills cameras. And the reason for that mostly has to do with dynamic range of, of that particular video camera and the latitude of the codec. So whether it be a raw codec or it be, uh, you know, whatever other type of container, uh, you know, one of the baked in type of codecs shooting log profiles, you know, a 10-bit is typically better than an 8-bit or 12-bit's better than a 10-bit and so on. Same thing with raw. Uh, you know, the, the, more, the more color latitude that you have, the more you're going to be able to push around those colors, push around that luminance. Now, for our purposes, for real estate photography, stills bodies are not that big of a difference one to the next. And, and the thing that you've got to keep in mind there more than anything is just resolution, you know, re resolution of the sensor. So I use as my primary camera an A7R4, that's a 61 megapixel, I believe it is, full frame sensor. I also have a, and use and have used an A7R3, that's a 40, two megapixel sensor and an a7 III, which is a 20 either a 24 or a 26 i forget what it is uh the two r bodies as far as resolution goes i can't really tell it i mean maybe there's a little bit of an edge to the r4 over the r3 uh but the r bodies versus the a7 III, absolutely you can tell the difference you know you can tell the difference uh, in those images, one million percent, and don't let anybody jive you and say, oh, well, you know, real estate's, the MLS is mangling it, and it's, you know, down to a two megapixel, like, you know what, you can still tell. So, and, and if you can't see that, then I don't know what to tell you. You know, congratulations, you can buy a cheap camera <laughs> and get away with it. Um, but yeah, you, you can tell the difference. So I think that's the, that's the main difference between stills bodies for real estate photography uh, is, is going to be the, the resolution of the body itself. Because, you know, we're, we're either shooting HDR or we're using lights, and, and so we're not cranking our ISO, you know, and so that, that doesn't really come into play like it does, you, you know, I mean, I guess if you're missing your exposures really, really badly, uh, but that, it doesn't come into play like it does with, with video cameras. With video cameras, Okay, there's only so much we can do to fit however much dynamic range into one scene. Now, yes, you can haul around lights when you're doing video, but that's not really, I mean, that to me is more interiors, architecture type of work. It's not real estate work, you know? So when I go into a real estate job with a stills body, I have everything on my person that I need to complete that job. I have one lens that I use, typically, with, with some exceptions, but I have one lens that I use for 90% of the jobs. 
I have one flash that's in a pouch on my belt. I have my iPad slung around my neck so I can wirelessly trigger, you know, and, and that's what I go in there with. Same thing with video. You know, when I'm doing real estate video, I enter the property carrying a gimbal with a camera on a gimbal. Now, I do also on occasion use a slider. I've used a monopod before, you know, and things like that, but I, it, but it's pretty light. You know, I, I don't, I don't bring in a bunch of C-stands and lights and things like that because that's just not practical for real estate. This isn't, you know, this is run and gun stuff. You know, you need to, you need to be able to work quickly with what you've got on your body, uh, you know, and not be going back and forth to cases and back and forth to vehicles and stuff like that. And um, it, it took me a little bit to really, really realize that, you know, I went through a phase where I was, you know, wanted to shoot everything with primes and, you know, so I'd go through once with an 18 millimeter, then I'd go through with a 24 millimeter and, you know, maybe do some details with a 50 or something like that. I was like, you know, this is goofy. <laughs> you know, I realized after a while. And, uh, and that's why so often when you'll get people online asking what lens is best for real estate work, almost always recommended to them by other more experienced people would be a wide angle zoom, uh, you know, and, and I, I believe that is the case, but you know, that's for another video, the branding, you know, the branding on the side of the van and, and, you know, and I wear branded shirts uh, pretty often and everything, but you know, it legitimizes you as a business, as a, as a company, not just some dude with a camera, you know, heavens knows there are, um, however many just a person with a camera that you know is such and such photography out there you know no you know what when you have a branded commercial vehicle and a, a branded shirt and back-end delivery is part of that too you know i was using dropbox for quite a while until i got into a more robust system you know and it and it, and it looks beautiful and it does single property websites and it hooks in with uh, with a payment platform so I can put all of my media behind a paywall. You know, everything just collectively legitimizes your business to your clients. So anyway, I hope you found some value in this video. I've got a couple more coming that I'm working on right now. Uh, should be in the next few days. I always say that, you know, and then I get busy. This is my busy time of the year. So it's my intent as of right now to get, get you a couple more videos in the next few days. But, you know, drop some questions in the comments. Uh, I, haven't, I haven't answered questions or responded to comments in a while. And there are plenty of new ones that, uh, you know, that I can go ahead and address. And so I think the next video that I am going to do is the expectations upon arriving on site. I, I think that was a really good idea. Somebody had commented that on one of my previous videos and uh, you know the context of it was you know he has these specific agents who it's, it's always there's always people all over the place and the places are ready to shoot and you know so how do you deal with that so that's that's a great subject to tackle so i'm going to do that one coming up next in a few days <laughs> or so uh, and anyway i uh, hope you got something from this video and i'll see you again soon god bless